going to leave it up here for a while. See, some of you guys are just taking pictures. I love it. <laughs> SG. What's this? BE. Barium enema, BE. Actually, I'm sorry, I take it back. This is a uh, small bowel series. It's a, it's a very delayed picture in which some of the contrast is already going up the, uh, the colon. What's this? IVP. IVP, it says right there, very good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, some path uh, pathology terms, okay. Um, ascites. Ascites is fluid in the peritoneal cavity. Pneumoperitoneum is air in the peritoneal cavity. You can have mechanical bowel obstructions. Mechanical being there's actually something physical there that's causing a blockage. So a mechanical bowel obstruction can consist of some type of fibrous adhesions where you have an overformation of bands of fibrous tissue that's preventing the movement of the contents within the bowel. Crohn's disease is a chronic inflammatory bowel disease, so the lining becomes inflamed, may become infected, preventing any movement of those contents. Uh, intersusception is the telescoping of the bowels. Intersusception is a telescoping of the bowels. Now I just want to do just an FYI here. Intersusception generally happens at the area between the small bowel and the large bowel. Why? because a small bowel is smaller than the larger bowel, so there's that tendency for it to telescope, a small bowel telescoping into the large bowel because of the difference in sizes. A bulbulus is a twisting of the bowels. So this can happen because there might be something going on with the, remember the mesentery, uh, the omentum, the mesocolon? there's a defect in one of those structures because those things are supposed to keep everything attached and held together, right? So if there's something going on with, with those things, it becomes detached, causing the bowels <laughs> to twist on itself. That's one of the reasons. Okay, an ileus. An ileus is a type of bowel obstruction, but it isn't physical like your mechanical. An ileus can be caused by Peritonitis, for example. You can have an adynamic type of ileus or you can have a paralytic type of um, ileus. Okay? But that has to do with the lack of movement, the lack of contraction within the bowels. Because we want that peristaltic activity to help push everything through, right? So this is caused by that. Next one here is an ulcerative colitis which is an inflammation of the colon. All right, any questions? Okay. Ascites, fluid collected in the, inside the peritoneum. Does that look painful? Mm -hmm. yeah. For a kid, yep, very painful. All right, pneumoperitoneum. Okay, that's air within the peritoneal cavity. So you can see there are two different borders here. Yeah. When you actually should see one edge. 
This is why we like to do it upright, and this is why we do an upright chest x-ray with different technical factors to better visualize the diaphragm. See two borders? Mm -hmm. Now, if the patient can't stand up, what's your alternate view? Supine. The patient can't stand up. We don't want them supine because we're trying to evaluate air and fluid levels, decubitus. right? Decubitus. Yeah. You guys remember that decubitus? Okay, decubitus. First of all, did we talk about decubitus in the beginning of the semester? Mm -hmm. What decubitus means? Mm -hmm. So decubitus means number one, patient is laying down, mm -hmm. recumbent. Horizontal beam. Horizontal, Horizontal beam. beam. Very good. Okay, so. We're going to do a decubitus image if the patient can't stand up. Ooh. Pneumoperitoneum. Jeez. You know what's freaky? Every time I see this, I see a skull. Do you guys see that? You see what? A skull. Yeah. Ghost, what's that movie, Ghost Rider? Mm -hmm. The Ghost Rider? Mm -hmm. The Flaming Skull? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys see it? No. You guys have no imagination. When you guys look in the class, you guys see birds and maybe rabbits. <laughs> Too much LSD, Dr. F. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like a three or four profile. The skull is looking that way. Eyes. Oh, now I see it. Oh. I see an old man with a beard. <laughs> All right. What kind of acid you take? It works, it works for kind of acid you take. Okay. <laughs> Now look, look how painful this is, guys. No peritoneum. There's so much air in there, it's pushing the diaphragm up. Look at what's happening to this child's heart. Jeez. It's getting compressed. Yeah, poor kid. I didn't get it out. They have to uh, put some kind of tube in there, inside the portal cavity, and uh, evacuate any air fluid. So they pull the air through the lungs back out, or no, no, they have to they have to make an incision through the abdomen to remove oh. this. Yeah. In the meanwhile, what's happening <coughs> here is that um, there, there's a breathing tube in here to help the, the patient breathe. Um, but this is something they, they need to alleviate this right away because there's so much stress in that on that heart that child could die. There's too much stress on there. Crohn's disease, again, this is the, um, the inflammation of the lining, chronic inflammation of the lining of the, um, of the bowels. Crohn's disease can cause an occlusion, so it prevents the, uh, the contents from the bowels from moving, um, taking its regular path, so it can cause not only, not only some inflammatory but can cause an obstruction um, which is again very painful so here here's an example of one with Crohn's disease and it's causing a, a total occlusion of this area of the transverse and most of the ascending so there is no contrast filling this area here in a susception telescoping of the bowels Again, most commonly uh, occurs between the small bowel and the large bowel because of its differences in the size or the diameter. Okay. A volvulus, twisting of the bowel. So we have twisting here, so there's doesn't allow passage for anything. So eventually what happens is, you know, your, your bowels produces, your large bowel produces air, right? During the uh, breaking down of the contents. So with that said, air has nowhere to go, it's trapped. Okay, yeah, painful, does it look painful? Yeah. An ileus? is the inability of their intestines to uh, contract normally and move the material through the body. Ulcerative colitis is a chronic or long-lasting disease that causes inflammation, irritation, or swelling. 
and sores called ulcers on the inner lining of the large intestine. It may also, it can also lead to, to bleeds. So you've heard of bleeding ulcers, right? Mm -hmm. about position, positioning. So the supine abdomen, supine abdomen is generally called a KUB, generally called, because in this radiograph you're including the kidneys, the ureters, and the bladder. So often referred to, go shoot me a KUB, is a supine abdomen. Okay? It can be done AP, but again, depends on the patient's condition, but the majority of the time it is done AP. If not, you do it PA. To evaluate for any type of rotation, we are going to look at the as is um, and make sure that they are equal distance from the as is to the surface of the table or the image receptor. Now, radiographically, can we tell if there's any rotation? What are we looking at radiographically if there is rotation on a KUB? As Remember the pelvis? Remember the iliac crest? One will be bigger than the other. Remember the obturator foramen? Okay, one will be bigger than the other. Right? Remember that? And so the iliac crest and the obturator foramen are inversely related when it comes to rotation. So let's just say, for example, I'm slightly rotated on my right side. Okay, I'm slightly rotated on my right side. The iliac on my right will be wider, wider whereas the iliac on my left side will be smaller. The obturator foramen will be larger on my left side, whereas it'll be smaller on my right. They're inversely related. So this is big. I gotta watch my hands. This is big, this is big. Okay. All right. If I was rotated on my right side. Okay, oppositely related. Well, you hear what's going on in the news? I get scared of what I say yeah. now. I get scared you know, of what, what I do. Huh? Somebody yeah, Matt Lauer. Yeah. Yeah. Matt Lauer of, uh, what is it, Good Morning? Uh, Who? Today, uh, <laughs> An old news yeah, Today Show. Today Show, yeah. Been on there for 20 years. Why? Well, everybody's, everybody's being accused of sexual harassment now, dude. Yeah. Yeah. They all are. <laughs> everybody's coming out of the woodworks. Every, every week it's someone else getting yeah. accused. Every week it's somebody. It's yeah. So I'm scared. <laughs> All right, but, we, but again, you know, if, I'm, if I get a little bit off color, please let me know, and I'll stop. I don't think any of us are going to see you. Never know. <laughs> Never know. As long as you give us extra credit. Yeah, right. Oh. <laughs> dude, she's going to have like 50 points extra credit, man. You just gave us two extra credit points. Now you're really scary. Yeah. <laughs> That's the real definition of <laughs> That's All called right. quid pro quo. <laughs> so these are your basic basic positions for uh, an abdomen. Supine. Patient's laying down. Place something underneath, uh, something underneath the leg to, again, remove the pressure from underneath them. Okay. Um, central ray is going to be mid-sagittal plane and at the iliac crest at 40 inch SID. Breathing instructions, what are we doing? Holding the breath. Hold it on inspiration or hold it on expiration? Inspiration. Inspiration, expiration. expiration. so breath out. You wanna bring the diaphragm up, mm -hmm. get more of the abdomen on there, okay? Expiration. Um, again, to make sure that the patient isn't uh, any isn't rotated, we're looking at the distance between the eyes as is and the top of the table or the top of the image receptor. It's a lot easier to do when you're on table, right? But when you're on a bed, on a gurney, there's some in, so there may be some rotation, and this is where your positioning <coughs> sponges are gonna come into play, making sure that there is no rotation. 
But even if they're on a table, they can have rotation because they may be transferred from bed to the table with the blanket still on them, and they may be laying on a blanket or something that will cause them to rotate on one side or the other. So make sure they're not laying on anything when you transfer them from gurney to table. All right, so the criteria, looking at the, uh, the synthesis previous needs to be included. That's because bad. what is the name of this image? It's called a K-U-B. And if I'm not seeing the synthesis pubis, that can also mean I'm probably cutting part of the bladder out. So you want to include the bladder in your, I'm sorry, you want to include the synthesis pubis in your radiograph. So is that clipped image? Now let's just repeat it. Should I repeat this? No. No, no I'm not going to repeat that. But it needs to be included. Okay. Uh, kidneys and lower liver margin are included. So here we have our liver shadow again, and I know this is the liver shadow because here's my ascending and all of a sudden it takes a turn. So where it starts to become transverse is the area of the lower margin of the liver. We see psoas muscles, do we agree? Yeah. Psoas muscles. Do we see, uh, do we see kidney shadows? No. I'm gonna point it out. Here is one kidney right here. See that? What? <laughs> Here's the outline. Oh. That's one kidney. Here is the other kidney. It goes like this. So, he is the right lower than the left. There's yes. the left. Here's the right. So, ass muscles, right? Can we see the outline of the bladder? Can we see the transverse colon? Mm -hmm. Can we see air in the erectile sigmoid area? <coughs> okay. All right. So Any questions here? All right. We all know what the psoas muscles are. Here's a, actually a very good one because you can see the outline very well. Mm -hmm. It goes from here. So it starts off L2, L3 and extends all the way down to the hip. Okay. So if someone has a six-pack big muscle, you can see it there. If someone has a what? A six-pack big. Oh, yeah, you can shoot through that. This is so still... It's more obvious compared to someone has a weak... Well, yeah, so it, yeah, it's going to be a little bit more... It's probably more obvious with someone who has more, more mass on them versus someone who's emaciated. But that's not, they don't really, that's not really associated with your abs. That's more like your yeah. hips. Right. Your abs is your life. But even if you have a six pack, yeah, we can shoot. Yeah. That's just muscle. It's not straight. The shadow. It's not. <laughs> Unless you have strong hips. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's the end of the semester. You just. I know. Out. Well, I'm excited too, yeah. I should be a little bit excited. All right, can you guys see the psoas muscles here? Yes. Yeah. All right, that's a little bit more obvious. All right. Hard to see here. Um, this patient may be a little bit more smaller, and that's why you have darker areas off the side, because they have a smaller waist. Um, can we see this anatomy going this way? Mm -hmm. That's your stomach, yes? Yes, yes. Liver. Liver shadow. Uh, this right here? Kidney. One kidney. Can't see it here, it's too dark. Um, Barely see the bladder. Okay, here is the synthesis pubis. Just by looking at this, is this a good x ray? Is there any rotation? Just by looking at it. That's pretty even, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's just say it's good. Could they have done a better job in collimating? Yes. Yes, so maybe we can cut off some of this excess field over here. All right. Um, PA abdomen. PA abdomen is the same thing. Uh, PA is going to be the mid-sagittal plane at the level of the iliac crest, 40-inch SID, done on expiration. Now, why would we want to do it on a, on a PA? Less OID? It's actually less, <laughs> yeah, exactly, bless you, less OID. The PA abdomen is most commonly done when we're doing a small bowel series, okay? Patient 
drinks the contrast, slowly moving through the stomach in, into the intestines. It generally takes about two hours for the entire small bowel to fill up, okay? During those two hours, we're taking a picture of the abdomen with the contrast every 15 to 30 minutes. Because we're studying motility, we're seeing how quickly the bowel fills up with the contrast. 15, 30 minutes? About between 15 and 30. And again, I'll give you guys the specifics later on next semester. Again, I'm just kind of introducing you to this so you don't have to write this down. Okay? But we generally do it in a PA because with the contrast filling the bowels, if they're laying on their back, the bowels become very convoluted. If you're laying on your belly, the bowel now is closer to the image receptor but also acts, acts as a compression to spread the bowels around. Okay, so we can see the separate, the separate loops of the small bowel. It's just, it just helps us see better, okay? So again, same as AP, face down, iliac crest, mid-sagittal plane, 40 inches, done on expiration. Can we tell the difference if it's done AP or PA? You guys remember Mickey Mouse ears versus bat ears? Did we ever talk about that? No. Yeah, we did. No. Someone's nodding their head back there. He's lying. Hey. He's straight up lying. Let's not start any rumors. <laughs> All right. Here, AP. Mickey Mouse ears. Nice and round. Mickey Mouse ears. PA, bat ears. Okay. Let me see that. Let me see that. <laughs> oh. So, okay. the fact that you like Mickey so much, is that like a... No, that's Inside not thing happening right It just here. works. That's, that's my thing. It just works. <laughs> I just, you know, I, I, I do analogies where you guys are, you know, familiar with. Who doesn't know Mickey Mouse? Yeah. So let's just say mouse ears <laughs> versus bat ears. Okay? They're a little bit more pointy. Mm -hmm. Yes, you guys agree? Yep. Yes. They're pointy. Mm -hmm. Bat ears. Versus round. A little bit more open. They're round. So the bat one is PA. 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 You're supposed to see the kidney better when you are PA. You actually see the kidneys better on an AP because your kidneys on your back. But again, same criteria. I mean, can we see the psoas muscles? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to see the psoas. Uh, even is it? Are they evenly? There's no rotation, right? Because the, the pelvis looks pretty even. Mm -hmm. Obturator foramen are pretty even. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So as muscles, okay. I see one kidney here. I see another kidney here. Those damn kidneys, right? That's a tough one. Oh, okay. I can see the kidney better on mine. Uh, all right, left lateral decubitus. Left lateral decubitus. If the patient cannot stand up, this is the optional view. If the patient cannot stand up, this is the optional view. The whole purpose of an upright abdomen is to evaluate for air and fluid levels. Remember? So if they can't stand up, we're going to put them on their side. And before I shoot an x-ray, same concept applies, same rule applies, is you want them laying on their side for about five to 10 minutes. So the fluids can settle and air can rise, okay? Fluids settle, air rises. So now we're looking for air on the upper side of the abdomen, okay? So if they're laying on their left side, we're looking for air on the right side. Okay. Am I making sense so far? Mm -hmm. All right. So let them lay down for about five to ten minutes. Twenty is better. The longer they lay there, the better. All right. Let me see if I can explain this to you guys correctly. Let me just think about this for a moment before I start spitting out words. Okay. Central ray. It's going to be mid-sagittal plane. Now, we're not going to center at the crest, we're going to center up a little bit higher because we're trying to include what in the image? The Good chest. answer, the diaphragm. <laughs> okay. 
okay? So we're gonna set our center a little bit higher. It says here approximately one to two inches because we're trying to include the diaphragm. Okay. Now, is this gonna be done on inspiration or expiration? Still gonna be done on expiration. All abdominal films are done on expiration for test purposes. Okay, because this is what you're gonna see happen. When we're trying to also look at the diaph uh, diaphragmatic area, diaphragm area, you will hear a technologist tell a patient to take a deep breath in, because now we're bringing the diaphragm down, because that's what we're looking at, right? We're trying to look for free air around the diaphragmatic area. I think I'm making up words. Okay, around the diaphragm. Okay, but for test purposes, it's done on expiration. I'm just telling you some things that you might see while you're out in the field, and you'll be like, oh no, Dr. F said, <laughs> Von Trager said, no, 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 okay? You don't want to do that, okay? Pardon me? SID? SID is uh, 40 inches, still 40 inches. All right, so left lateral to Q because we are looking for Free intra-abdominal air under the right hemi-diaphragm, right hemi-diaphragm. Instead of centering at the iliac crest, we're going to center two inches above the uh, crest because we are looking for free air near the right hemi-diaphragm. <clears throat> Is it because of ANA? <laughs> <laughs> on the left side, we have a patient on the left side. Oh, you're talking about this right here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll find out. You can't record anymore. <laughs> All right, left lateral only. When we are doing a decubitus abdomen, we only do left lateral. We never do right lateral. It's always done left lateral. Okay. Why? Let, let, hold on. Huh? Okay. We do left lateral because if you did right lateral, air would now be going up to the left hemidiaphragm. What else is in that area that has air? The stomach. Who said that? Right on that. Okay? Okay? So you don't do right lateral because, because of that. Because if air rises, we can't see it because of the stomach. We won't be able to tell the difference if it's in the stomach or if it's actually free air. Okay? All right. So, um, Yeah, it's kind of a, it's really, a, it's washed out. It's, it's too, it's too long of a scale. All right, so left, left lateral decubitus, uh, center, they centered a, a, a couple inches above the iliac crest. Did we include the diaphragm? Mm -hmm. It's in there, right? Yeah. So this is a good film. Um, is the patient rotated? <laughs> I think they're pretty, I think they're pretty straight on. Yeah. They're pretty straight on. Okay, so the right, Amy diaphragm is going to be just demonstrated. You need to include both sides of the body, just like if you were doing an AP or PA. Um, done on expiration, using the appropriate exposure factors. Now, when you're doing a decubitus film, you are going to be using grid, right? Don't forget to use a grid. We're no longer using the table bucky. You can here's the other alternative: is you can place the patient on the side if they were on the bed and have them scoot back, they're laying down on the gurney, have them scoot back towards the wall unit and you can shoot it that way. You understand what I'm saying? So if they're on the bed, they're laying on their side. Okay, push the gurney and push them towards your wall bucky so you can use the wall bucky instead of a grid, a gridded cassette. You get a better image that way if you can do that. But you're not going to have that in the OR. You're not going to have that in the ER. You're not going to have that in the ICU. If then you're in department, take advantage of that wall unit, wall bucky. Okay. All right. 
Um, you may also want to bolster them a little bit because if we're looking for fluid levels, we also want to see the lateral edge of the abdomen on the downside, on the lower side. So you want to prop them up a little bit. Okay? What's going on here? Fluid levels? We got air and we also got air fluid levels. Okay, so this is air. Uh, this is air throughout the bowel, 